Hi everyone and welcome to What's New in Sakai 23. I'm Wilma Hodges, I'm the Sakai Community Manager and I'm also the Director of Training and E-Learning Initiatives at Longsite. I decided to do a recorded What's New in Sakai 23 just to give everyone a quick overview of some of the new and exciting features that are in the Epic Current release. Some of you may have seen a similar session that I did over the summer at SakaiCon in July. So this is a little bit of a recap um, from that particular session, although there are some new items in this particular session that I didn't cover over the summer. So if you saw that session, um, there will be some new stuff in this one for you as well. So I didn't put this in the um, live program because for a lot of folks, if they attended SakaiCon, it would be repeat. But for those of you who didn't attend SakaiCon or anyone who would just like a quick refresher on what's new in 23, this session is for you. All right, so I'm just going to dive right in um, to some of the new items. So the big news in 23 is our new portal user interface. Um, that is the new look and feel with the navigation um, over here on the, the left hand side. Um, the, the Courses that used to appear across the top have moved, so you now have your pinned sites and recent sites that show up in the left margin. Um, you can also get to all of your sites by selecting that site waffle icon up in the top or the view all my sites in the bottom to get to what we call the sites drawer, and that's where you will see all of the courses in which you're enrolled. You've also got quick access to the account menu, um, which slides out from the right hand side. And it also gives you a quick way to switch between light and dark mode if you prefer to see the portal in dark mode. Let me just show you what that looks like. And, um, and you can sw switch back just as easily. Another new thing in Sakai 23 is Sakai Plus. This, um, if you've heard a little bit of the buzz about Sakai Plus, it's a pretty ingenious way to plug Sakai into almost any other enterprise LMS system. Anything that supports LTI Advantage, essentially. So if your institution is running um, another primary LMS as the enterprise tool, something like Canvas or Brightspace or Blackboard or Moodle, any of those, um, you can actually plug Sakai in just like an LTI tool. So it, um, it will automatically transfer grades back to the enterprise LMS for the institution. It will automatically pick up enrollments from the campus you know, system and pull those in via LTI. So it really makes for a very slick and easy way to plug Sakai in and be able to use all the features in Sakai um, as sort of a, an add-on or a secondary LMS um, without a whole lot of implementation and setup. So if you're interested in learning more about Sakai Plus, I encourage you to come to one of the webinars that we're having later this month. Um, it's the same webinar, webinar, it's just offered on two different days. So uh, we're having the first one on November 20th at 10 a.m. Eastern, and then another one on November 28th at 2 p.m. Eastern. So um, hopefully you can make one of those dates and uh, you can um, learn all about Sakai Plus. There'll be a quick demo of how it works and there'll be plenty of time for questions as well. So if you have any interest in learning more about that, um, please do try to attend one of those sessions. And, um, and just as an FYI, Sakai Plus does come bundled with Core Sakai for 23. So it's nothing extra. It's just normal Sakai 23 comes with Sakai Plus already in it. So uh, very exciting stuff there. All right, uh, back to other new features. So we also have accessibility. There's a new roster special needs info column that shows up for the instructor and you can actually enter information in here to keep track of any um, you know, special accommodations or notes that you might want to keep. Um, about a particular student and maybe anything that's specific to that user. Uh, this is only available for um, instructors. Students aren't going to see any information about other students, obviously. But uh, it's a nice way to document this stuff, keep it all together in the LMS and the roster so that it's easy to find 
when you um, need to refer to that to maybe extend a deadline or provide double time on tests or if you're team teaching and you have more than one instructor, um, you can put that information in there so that all of the instructors that are team teaching, of course, have access to the same information. The assignment tool also got some uh, new bling in Sakai 23. So we now have a very mobile friendly grader. Um, so this is just a, a image of what the grading interface looks like. You can see uh, when you view a particular student submission, you see the student, um, and then if, it, if it's a file, in this case I'm previewing this uh, file that was attached. And if I want to grade it, I just click on this little grade button, and the grade button actually floats. So if you have a long submission where you're scrolling down reading a long paper, the grade button will always be available. You don't have to scroll back up to find it. And then when you do, when you do select it, it pops out from the right hand side and um, it allows you to very quickly score and still kind of preview the, the main submission behind it. Um, now you'll see over here on this side, this is what the mobile view looks like. So you can see that it's very mobile friendly. It makes it much easier to grade on a phone or smaller tablet. And this uh, image just shows the rubric grading. So if you have a rubric attached to an assignment and you want to grade with the rubric, you do still have that capability. The rubrics look a little bit different because of the format of the grading um, UI. Uh, we want to keep it very minimalist so that it would work on a mobile device. So instead of kind of a large grid, you've got a more linear arrangement of the rubric items, but, um, but it does work still the same way. So you can select um, the you know, appropriate rating for each criterion, and it will total up the points for you. All right, so Calendar also had a few updates in 23. Um, the Conversations tool, that's the new Conversations tool, which you may have seen previewed in the virtual conference site, for example. Um, this now connects the due dates to the calendar. So if you're setting up a conversation topic and you set a due date in conversations, that's what this little um, snippet of the screen would look like. If you put that date in there, it will automatically populate that date on the calendar for the course um, without you having to do anything extra. The dashboard tool is also turned on by default. It's, it's visible. Um, it was in what we call experimental status up until, um, you know, before Sakai 23. So um, we usually create tools and they go into experimental until they've been tested and used a little bit to, um, to check to see if all the functionality is there. So, um, so now it's actually available by default. It's not turned on by default, but it's available for institutions who would like to try it out. And there's actually two different types of the dashboard. There's the home dashboard, which um, shows up in the home site. There's also another course dashboard, which shows up in an individual course when you go into a course. Um, so it's meant to eventually replace the overview tool, uh, but you can certainly choose to use either of them and maybe stick with overview until you're comfortable switching over to dashboard. Um, we're still collecting, you know, feature enhancement requests and things like that for the dashboard. But now that it's turned on, it's available by default, it's more likely that people will try it out, use it, and um, let us know if there's any tweaking to be done. The discussion tool um, has some new enhancements related to um, statistics and grading. So if you go into the statistics and grading area in discussions now, you'll see that it breaks out the replies a little bit more. Um, so you'll see what, um, how many uh, a student has authored the original response and then the replies to other students. So a lot of times it's a very common scenario for someone to assign an original post and then maybe two follow-ups to other students. So now you can very quickly tell at a glance if a student has completed that particular uh, requirements, um, you know, with their original post and then two replies. Um, you can also download 
the um, statistics as a CSV file as well. So that uh, makes it a little bit easier if you wanted to download it either for record keeping or to do some scoring offline. Now in the grade book, um, this is one of the items, remember I mentioned, uh, that weren't in the, um, the summer Sakai Khan, uh, what's new session that I did. So, um, this is, um, the course gra grade breakdown is very, um, similar to, if some of you recall from the older grade book, or grade book classic as we call it, um, the o item overview page. A lot of people wanted that item overview page so that they could tell at a glance um, exactly how many items and, and how many points each item was worth so they could see how many total points are available in a particular course. So this course grade breakdown gives you that information. So you'll, you'll find it under the course grade. There's a little drop down to get to some additional um, options there. And you'll see the course grade breakdown as the last item in the list. And when you select it, you get a little pop-up window that shows you a list of all the items in the course, how many points they're worth, a total points at the bottom, and it'll add up any items that are in there. And it'll also tell you how many students are graded for any of those items. So for this example, I didn't have a whole lot of grading going on, <laughs> um, so none of them are graded. But you would see the count, um, so you can kind of look to see which things might still need to have a grade um, completed out. Uh, so that's a nice new feature for those of you that were missing that item overview page. There's also another gradebook enhancement for quick entry. So this allows you to, to um, select the quick entry tab in the gradebook and then you can choose um, which item you want to enter. So in this case I've selected homework one but it gives you a single page to very quickly plug in a lot of scores for the whole class. And then you can also enter comments and you have the option to excuse an item for a particular student. So it just makes it a little faster if you're doing manual grade entry in the gradebook. You can do it all in one screen. Now this is for items that are created in the gradebook. So if you're entering grades in assignments, you would enter that in the assignment tool. The assignment tool has a similar quick entry yet like um, screen. Uh, but this is for items that you've created in the gradebook that otherwise you would have to use sort of the spreadsheet view and then select to add a comment. This lets you very quickly um, do it all on screen. The lessons tool also got a very nifty update that lets you copy individual pages from another site. Now this one I didn't I didn't actually realize that this was in 23 until after you know my session over the summer, uh, but I was very happy to see that it was in there because this is something people would ask about a lot when you um, roll courses from term to term. Typically people will copy over all their content from one site to the next, but it it was a little tricky with lessons because if you wanted to copy just say. Um, a couple of pages, or you know, not everything, but just you know, one page. Uh, you couldn't easily do that through the site import interface. However, then 23, there is an option to, that lets you pull from another course within lessons. So when you go to lessons and you select add content, you'll notice that the add items from another page option appears here under the simple content items section. And if you select that, it gives you a drop down menu at the top where you can choose from any other sites in which you're an editor or instructor. And um, you can select that site to load the pages from that site and then choose an individual page to pull the content from. So it makes it really easy to bring in a single page or even just a couple of items off of a page from another course without having to bring over all the pages and then um, delete the ones you don't need. So um, for those of you looking for easier ways to copy from course to course when you're just kind of selectively cherry picking information, this um, option will be your friend. All right, in the messages tool in Sakai, you now have the option to schedule messages. 
So this is very cool. I don't know how many of you schedule messages in Google and Slack and other places, but it's terrific for allowing me to dash off a quick message and then schedule when that's going to be delivered in the future. So, um, so you can send out reminders to folks. You can, um, you know, schedule things throughout the term. Uh, it allows you to automate a little bit. So, um, so this option is in the messages tool. There's just a little checkbox when you want the message to be sent and then you pick your date and time and off you go. So um, for those of you looking for uh, ways to save time and automate, um, you might try the scheduling messages uh, option. Now in the roster tool, um, we have a new uh, nickname display. So a lot of um, institutions will use the nickname um, field for the student's preferred name. So they may have a preferred name that's different from the you know user name of record. And uh, prior to 23, that was a little bit harder to find. Um, but now the nickname is displayed in the roster. So you can actually um, look at it there and it will show up um, as the nickname so that the you know, instructor or other folks in the course, if you allow the roster to be viewed by students, can see um, who, that, who that person's uh, preferred name is. The rubrics tool now lets you um, export PDF. So you can do it in a couple different places. You can, in the manage rubrics, um, you'll see the little PDF icon and you can export to PDF um, a blank rubric, you know, that just shows the ratings and the criteria, um, but it's not actually filled out. Or you can, in um, in the grade area, when you're grading something, you can select the PDF icon there, and it will print the graded rubric for that particular student that you're currently viewing. So, um, so you can print that off easily to keep a record for the student, or you can print a blank version. If you want to just kind of have, um, you know, a print or a PDF version of the overall rubric. There are also a number of other new things in rubrics. Um, I didn't take screenshots of each of these, but I will go through them briefly. So um, there is now a warning that's displayed uh, if your rubric point value doesn't match the point value for the item that you're going to associate it with. So for example, if you had a rubric that's worth 10 points and you were going to use it um, to attach to an assignment that's worth 100 points, it would pop up and let you know, hey, these are two different points, so that you have an opportunity to fix that before you attach that rubric. Um, you also now have the option to save a rubric as a draft if you're working on it and you just want to save it and come back to it later. Um, there's also the option to change criterion and rubric titles while it's locked. Now, why is that important? Well, once you attach a rubric to an item, um, it, it locks that item because it, it doesn't want you to make changes to something that's already being used in an assignment or a test or a gradebook item. So, um, so once it's locked, you have to go back in and, and unassociate it before you can make any changes. But maybe you just want to change the title of it. You just want to rename a, a you know a criterion title or a rubric title, um, and you don't want to have to unassociate and then change and then reassociate. This lets you change just those titles. So you can't change the points or the weighting depending what type of rubric you have, um, but you can make those little tiny edits to the the titles, um, and that can be really super helpful in some cases. There's also now um, uh, some logic to check for the minimum maximum score for the rubric um, to make sure that the total weight, if you're using a weighted um, rubric, that it, it, it adds up to 100. So you want it to always add up to 100. So this just kind of checks the math for you to make sure that it does. Um, you can create criterion groups for rubrics. I, th I think this one actually, the criterion groups, um, also, it's new in 22, but it, there's been some additional work done on it. Um, so if you didn't know that was an option already, it, it is available in 23. Um, and there's better group support for rubrics um, for grading things like group assignments. Um, so that is, is supported now. 
And you can also um, use some basic formatting within the criterion um, and rating descriptions. Um, you have the opportunity to use bold and italic. So when you're writing up the you know, criteria, um, you know, information for students, you can do some very simple formatting of those uh, text areas. In the Site Info tool, um, there is now a Publish on Date. So if you want to manually publish sites, but you don't want to set a date like across the system, um, you can decide when you want it to be published and just kind of select your, your dates for that individual site. So it gives a little more freedom, again, to automate certain tasks, but also allow instructors or you know, whoever has edit rights to the site to go in and modify that. And also in Site Info, um, the Merge My Data option was bumped up to the top. Um, this is the screen that you would see when you import from course to course at the beginning of the term. And a lot of people um, prefer the Merge My Data because that way they're not going to lose any information if they accidentally pull from the wrong site. And we've had people pull um, you know, the empty site into the one with content instead of vice versa. So merging prevents any harm from occurring there, but it was the second option in the list. And a lot of folks, if they're just click, click, clicking, they just click the first thing. So the two items were swapped. So now merge is at the top, hopefully more likely for folks to select that first option. And um, the, the language around um, what each option is was updated slightly to make it more clear what's happening there in that type of copy when you do a replace versus a merge. In tests and quizzes, um, now the uh, user photos will show up um, within the submission screen. So if a student has profile pictures, they'll show up here so you can start to associate those names and faces. Um, if there is no profile photo, you just see the initials in the little thumbnail. So you'll see that there. And there's also um, some email options that are new in tests and quizzes. So you have the option to, um, to send some different notifications when things become open and, um, and whether or not, uh, you know, you're notified. So, You'll see all of those when the settings for the assessment, when you go to schedule it, um, you can choose which notification options you prefer. Also new in tests and quizzes, and again, I didn't take screenshots because some of these are difficult to encapsulate in a photo, uh, but there are some major improvements in performance that were done for 23. So there was a lot of back-end work done to make them perform much more quickly and, and performantly, especially for high numbers, high concurrency. Um, improved error handling around things like auto-submit dates. And uh, also, when you're printing, the calculated questions will display the variables instead of displaying like um, a substituted value for the var variable. So if you're printing it off, it's easier for the instructor to tell uh, what those val variables are. And then also there's a warning message about multiple tabs before beginning an assessment because that is a common complaint from folks if they have you know three or four different tabs open with a test and you know multiple tabs. Sometimes if you save in, in the wrong tab, you might accidentally overwrite an answer or something. So it warns users about um, closing out those multiple tabs to avoid that sort of thing. All right, so that is it for the what's new in um, Sakai 23 pre-recorded on-demand content. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. If you have any questions about any of these features, feel free to contact me. And you can reach me at wilma.hodges at aperio.org. Thanks.